With parents like Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love, how is a daughter supposed to live a normal life? From her massive monthly stipend to a difficult relationship with an unstable mother, these are tragic details about Frances Bean Cobain. The relationship between Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love was famously complicated, and you could say Frances Bean Cobain was pulled into her parents' reckless lifestyle before she was even born. That's because there were concerns that Love had used drugs while pregnant. The drama started in 1992 when a then-pregnant Love told Vanity Fair about doing heroin with Cobain on a specific occasion after she knew she was pregnant. At the height of their drug abuse. <laughs> Damn, if I wasn't so needle sick, I'd be on tour with Guns N' Roses right now. That implication caused controversy and led many to worry about the baby's health. Love and Cobain later denied the allegations, though, telling E, as soon as Courtney found out she was pregnant, she immediately contacted an obstetrician and a doctor specializing in chemical dependency, and she has been assured that she can expect to have a healthy baby. Despite this explanation, Frances was removed from her parents' home by child services only a few weeks after she was born. In 2011, Love finally admitted to the fix, it's true, I used heroin in the first three weeks of my pregnancy, but so f what? I also took a few puffs on a cigarette. She added that she was encouraged to abort Francis because of her use of these substances, but that, quote, I wasn't about to lose my baby. Francis Cobain's father, Kurt, was also involved in drugs before and after her birth. Love confirmed what was widely believed to the fix, that the elder Cobain's drug of choice was heroin. In fact, the last time Francis saw her father alive was visiting him at a rehab center. As for her mother, Francis revealed in a 2009 court testimony that Love has taken drugs for as long as I can remember, and she basically exists now on Xanax, Adderall, Sonata, and Abilify. Love's drug-related offenses are matters of public record, and Love Love even admitted in an ABC News interview that, between 2001 and 2004, during Francis's pre-teen years, I was on drugs and nothing I wrote made any sense. Cobain reflected on the non-traditional mother-daughter relationship that grew from Love's persistent drug issues, admitting on the RuPaul What's the Tea podcast in 2019, I was so f bitter and angry and upset and resentful for a really long time. She shared that she likes her mother, quote, when she is on a right and healthy path, but also pointed out that she has never been able to influence her mother's behavior in this regard. Kurt Cobain committed suicide before Francis was even two years old, much too young to understand. Francis explained how she learned the truth on the RuPaul What's the Tea podcast, saying, I wasn't told my dad committed suicide until the age of five. My mom preemptively sent me to therapy a year before telling me so that I could be eased into that conversation. Because she never got to know her father, Francis compared Kurt to an imaginary figure like Santa Claus and told Rolling Stone that fame prevented her from bonding with her dad in the little time they had. She explained, and Kurt got to the point where he eventually had to sacrifice every bit of who he was to his art. I think that was one of the main triggers as to why he felt he didn't want to be here. She continued, If he had lived, I would have had a dad, and that would have been an incredible experience. This was day 1993, She's even spoken out against those who glamorize musicians' deaths, saying, We love to put them on a pedestal. If Kurt had just been another guy, he'd have abandoned his family in the most awful way possible. Despite never getting to know Cobain, Francis wrote in a now-deleted Instagram birthday tribute to him that said simply, You are loved and you are missed. She's also posted suicide prevention resources, telling her followers, Needing help is not weakness. MTV reports that after being removed from her parents' care when she was only weeks old, Love lost custody of Cobain once again in 2003, when a then 11-year-old Cobain was present for her mother's drug overdose and subsequent arrest. In the months that followed, Cobain was often placed in the care of her paternal grandmother, Wendy O'Connor, as well as her aunt, Kimberly Cobain. In 2005, Love fought to get her daughter back after a rehab stay. Yet only months after getting custody back, CNN reports that Love went on to violate her probation. By age 17, Cobain chose to permanently live with her grandmother, causing Love to lose custody of her for the third time. In an interview with People, Love's attorney denied that a drug relapse was the motivation behind the change of custody. Just two years earlier, Cobain had explained to Harper's Bazaar that life with her mother had involved frequent moves and other forms of unsteadiness, but that her grandmother was a constant in her life. 
Moving in with her grandmother was easier said than done. When Cobain made the decision, Love took to Facebook to publicly bash her daughter and Kurt's mother. In her incoherent rant, the whole front woman wrote, among other things, that Cobain was a liar and surrounded by bad influences. Around the same time, the Daily Mail reported that Cobain got a restraining order against her mother after a confrontation between the two turned physical. In Cobain's court testimony, she accused Love of drug use, accidentally killing Cobain's pets when high, and threatening her and her ex with violence. In 2012, Love tweeted accusations against ex-Nirvana drummer Dave Grohl, claiming he'd acted inappropriately with her daughter. Cobain defended Grohl and said that her mother's claims were entirely fabricated. Frances Bean Cobain married her boyfriend of five years, Isaiah Silva, in 2014, but the wedding was anything but conventional. The couple decided to wed in secret and not invite Cobain's mother, Courtney Love, and an unnamed source reportedly told E! that Love was crushed to learn that she'd been shunned. Despite avoiding prying eyes during the ceremony, the couple split by 2016. The model reflected on RuPaul What's the Tea podcast that she may have gotten married for the wrong reasons, saying, "...the idea of marriage, of securing a family very early on, was the complete opposite of what my mom did. I really was grasping for some kind of stability anywhere." According to People, Cobain's divorce from Silva turned messy when he obtained her father's Martin Brand guitar, claiming he had received it from Francis as a wedding gift. Not only was her late father's instrument sentimental to Cobain, but it's also reportedly worth millions. It was even the guitar he played on MTV's Unplugged. I guarantee you I will screw this song up. Silva later filed one of several lawsuits against Love, claiming she and her daughter had conspired to kill him to get back the guitar. He was eventually court-ordered to undergo a psychiatric evaluation, and in 2020, the guitar sold at auction for $6 million. You could say that one of the upsides to having rock star parents is the money that comes with it. Yet, Frances Bean Cobain doesn't necessarily see it that way. She revealed on RuPaul What's the Tea podcast, "...my relationship to money is different because I didn't earn it." She further communicated a sense of guilt at having the unearned money, comparing it to a loan that never goes away. According to People, Cobain is worth $11.3 million and receives $95,000 a month from her late father's estate. While that's obviously plenty of money to do whatever you want, Frances claimed that she once didn't know how to handle it and spent frivolously. After years of wasting her wealth, Cobain realized she needed to conserve her money and learn how to live well, not just lavishly. She went on to admit, "...it took me stepping away from that and getting sober in order to realize that no matter how much money you think you have, it's not permanent." After years of watching her mother struggle with drug dependence, Frances Bean Cobain realized she too had a problem with substances. However, unlike Courtney Love, Cobain knew how to keep her addiction a secret. However, Cobain's grandmother, Wendy O'Connor, could see her problems for what they were, but believed Cobain had to work through it on her own. For her part, Cobain has expressed appreciation that her grandmother chose not to intervene. In 2018, Cobain shared with her Instagram followers that she was two years sober. In the now-deleted post, she wrote, "...self-destruction and toxic consumption and deliverance from pain is a lot easier to adhere to. Undeniably, for myself and those around me, becoming present is the best decision I have ever made." She added that she made her sobriety public knowledge to help others who also may be struggling. In 2017, Frances Cobain had a near-death experience that changed her life. According to the Daily Mail, she was traveling aboard an airplane that had to make an emergency landing after losing one of its engines. Cobain shared in a now-deleted Instagram post how she'd changed to the ill-fated Air France flight from one she had previously booked in order to get home earlier after attending Paris Fashion Week. She recalled, "...when I felt the plane tilt, saw the wing directly in front of me catch fire, and basically came to grips with my own mortality." Cobain went on to write about how the incident impacted the anxiety she was already dealing with, writing, "...all the mundane, crippling anxieties I once let dictate how I functioned have dissipated." Cobain also shared that her mother, Courtney Love, was a person she worried about never seeing again, making it obvious that the relationship still mattered to her despite past difficulties. The pilots were able to land the plane successfully, and the incident seems to have prompted positive changes in Frances Bean Cobain's life. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.